Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Without doubt, the celebration of Christmas is in the air and the new year draws closer. Of course, we're keeping things seasoned and spicy on this episode. I mean, take a look at the three of us looking really Christmassy. Well, I'll be kicking things off as directly as I can. And I'm saying, make the adoption of a child in Nigeria much easier for the people. Chuka is asking, where is our president? We'll find out in his advocacy. Evans stirs up a conversation on superstitious beliefs and civilization. According to him, beliefs are very African. Now I can't wait to hear Evans. And lastly, Bolahon advocates that in the season of Christmas, let us all give out of love and not as a show off. I agree with you on that one, Bolahon. Unexpected, you say? The advocate gives nothing but unpredictable. See you after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. And so the world is gathering this season to celebrate the birth of a man who lived for just 33 years and changed humanity forever. And I speak on adoption blues. The story of surrogacy started in the Bible. Mary was the surrogate mother. And my friend Kenny Adenuba said to me the other day, In other words, there is nothing new under the sun. But I'm not talking about surrogacy today. I'm rather visiting the option of adoption for couples unable to have their own children and mature singles who want to raise children of their own. The process of adoption in Nigeria is supposed to be simple. In Lagos State, you start with submitting an application letter, attending pre-counseling session, invitation for interview, filling of form, and so on and so forth. And then you make a choice of child in, a, in an orphanage for a foreigner, it starts with choosing an adoption service provider. Now that's something we should be thinking about. Then you apply to be found eligible to adopt, be matched with a child, and then you gain custody of the child in Nigeria. And then you apply for the child to be found eligible for orphan status. Then you bring your child home. But these are on paper. It is increasingly difficult to adopt a child in Nigeria. The queue in Lagos State alone is so long and one practically will need to turn into an all-season Santa Claus to many orphanages coming for babies to adopt. In many states in Nigeria, the story is the same. As in everything Nigerian, you need to know someone influential who can fast-track your request. <laughs> the challenge of finding babies through man and the legal process, so discouraging as well. Oh, well, the legal system favors the political class alone in Nigeria anyway. 
The dimension of the highest bidder is what you find in the South-South. A boy is 800,000 Naira, a girl is worth 600,000 Naira. No, let's save the argument about the influence of patriarchy in determining the fees for another day. If you're a right-thinking person, you wonder whose baby is being sold to you. And why pay so much? Something is just not right. You may find yourself thinking about higher purchase from a baby factory, and when the bubble will burst, if you went ahead with the purchase. Ah. When people can't get something done legally, they resort to illegal means. And much as we talk about politics every time, our lives are happier with other essential things like a beautiful soulmate and children to love and nurture. Some of us may never have our own biological children, but should the system deny us the chance to adopt as well? My advocacy is that professionals in the civil service come up with better, quicker, less depressing ways to officially adopt a baby in Nigeria. Adopting one child won't change the world, but for that child, the world will change. So the long-suffering ones on the key for three years and counting, don't give up just yet. Bob Nestor Mali sang, don't worry about a thing. Everything gonna be all right. So then, cheer up. Merry Christmas to everyone waiting, waiting to have their own child through IVF, surrogacy, or adoption. Share Christmas with them. It will happen. So cheer up. Merry Christmas. Lovely, lovely. Um, I had always wondered why it is so difficult to adopt in Nigeria. And these babies are becoming adults in the orphanage where they are, and nobody is taking them on. It, it, it's, it's just amazing what kind of people we are that will put stumbling, stumbling blocks on virtually every pathway and make things that should be normal to be difficult to achieve. I, I, I don't understand what is going on in that space. And this is what is foiling the baby factories. Oh, yes. Yeah. When people cannot get these things done legally, they go be behind Back the door stage, and, yes. and, 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 and arrange we, it. We have asked this question repeatedly, even in, within the bar, OK? And some of the answers we've gotten, especially from the Lagos State government, is that when you're talking about adoption, it's a very sensitive matter. And it requires a lot of carefulness. The Ministry of Youth and Social Development that masterminds the process, because that is where you start from. Mm. Some states call it other names, some call it Ministry of Women Affairs, some call it Ministry of Most of them welfare. Yes, so uh, that's where you start the process from. But we've also had cases where people adopt children because the state was not fully involved in documentation. These children are used for ritual purposes and other means of. Uh, sexually abuse or that kind of abuse. So the, the, the excuse the state gives now is that you, the state must be fully involved at all the steps. Like in Lagos State, you first of all submit an application. Right. After you submit the application, the commissioner of the Ministry of Youth and Social Development will have to see you. Then there will be an interview. After the interview, you see? You, before you identify the child, the name of the child based on your, your letter, the name of the orphanage, or if you're adopting from a neighbor. Which is why you go to different that. orphanages. Yes. And, and let me say this also. We should also know there are some people who, who found children by the roadside, by right. an uncompleted building and all that. In law, it's called finder's keeper. When you find a child somewhere, you cannot keep the child. You must also take the child to an orphanage, to, sorry, to the ministry to regularize. Okay, so because I know a lot of persons who have seen children that way and they just right. kept them as a, you know, it's illegal. So I think what we should do is to interrogate the states so that we can have the bottlenecks, okay, erased, so that now that we have, we are in an information age, you can now easily, okay, put data together and then have this thing done in such a way that you can deploy social workers to follow up on each child that is adopted by uh, the adoptee. Or their, uh, uh. Chuka, what do you think? <clears throat> yeah, I was actually surprised when you said there's a very long queue to adopt children. Uh, that surprises me because it's not like I see so many, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm totally ignorant of it, but I don't see so many adopted children around. 
So I'm like, who is the, who are these on this long queue? And when they get the children, how come I don't know that so many children are adopted? <laughs> you know what I mean? Instead, I, or maybe I've just assumed some biological But, but you know, Chika, children. hold on. But you know that in Nigeria, there's still a lot of stigmatization attached to Correct. people adopting. So people don't want you to know that they've just there, adopted. There, there so they'd rather adopt <laughs> babies. I'm there's aware. a long queue. I'm aware. Then, yeah, that's really right. Oh, I see. So the, the queue be mostly babies, right? Okay, okay. Yeah. And then why boys are more expensive than girls? <laughs> we'll have to find out for the South. Again, <laughs> that's, 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 that's the same that's, that's reason why so some people will continue to bear children until right. they find a boy. Exactly. Uh, it's the same boy. reason. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> mama and boy, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. But, so, but yes, I think I agree with Evans. We've got to shorten the process. Because I know that I actually got to the point of wanting to contact the governor of Lagos State over a friend of mine who wanted to adopt when the process was just getting, it just seemed unnecessarily long. It looked like nothing was happening or everything was being done to delay it, you know. And because then I knew who the, I knew the governor at the time of Lagos State, I thought, okay, maybe I will try to do that, you know, with him. At least I'm not going to beg him for money, you know, so... Hopefully. You said <laughs> pretty much what I said. You need somebody influential Why in should government I need to, to, to fast track for you? Why? To help, to intervene in a child adoption. Do that is where that? the problem is. Even the issue of the commissioner will need to interview you. How many people, people. will the commissioner interview? Can I, can I shock you? There's a stage where you have to involve the commissioner of police of the state. Uh -huh. The last stage. And you know how busy the commissioner of police the last stage is? Is it that the commissioner will come or will deploy Designate someone. Uh, you know, someone to come and... That's the last stage before... It is to really... The process. After that, after that, you now have to go to the family court or the magistrate court to regularize it. You see, there is this long wait and then there is so, the legal part. Yes. And then, but three years, you're still on the queue. You're tired. And then you want to use another... Uh, option, mm. which is to go down south, and that's where you now have to buy, to like buy, which is yeah. like higher purchase, yeah. you know, and then you have to save up and all of that. Mm. And at the end of the day, you, you're palpitating that look, I don't even know whether that is even crude. You know, it, it, it's, it's not something that ordinarily we should contemplate at all. But having the, these to buy, places exist. How do you buy human beings? These, these are children. These places exist, and just as you said, and that's why you find grown-up boys and girls in orphanages. Because the process is so and long, not so they grow it. up there. Yeah. The, the, the earlier these kids can grow up in families, the better for them. You see, there, there, there is already the psychological problem of nobody wants me. Right. Yeah. So the earlier you plant that kind of a kid in a family, the better for yes. him or her. So that he doesn't support. become an adult and it's like, I was abandoned as a baby. And now I've grown up till this stage. Still nobody wants me. Yes. And it's, so this, it's a problem. Such a child may want to take it on society because it's abuse, you know. Some form that. of psychological abuse. Yes. Right. Chuka is up next after the break. As we approach Christmas, <clears throat> I want to ask where the F is our president? For the past five years, Nigerians have been searching and looking for their president. The man said to have won the presidential elections, not only in 2015, but in 2019. As the years go by, it looks like there never really was a man called Muhammadu Buhari, a retired army general. We saw him during the campaigns. He changed clothes from one traditional attire to another, as he went round on his campaigns. He appeared intent on winning and cleaning up the nation. He even had a lawyer and clergyman run with him. Now that man is yet another story for another day. For this Christmas, it's Buhari. In the first year, an alarmed nation watched as he temporarily abandoned work and spent almost 200 days in the UK. He was apparently ill. It was not until a demonstration was staged outside the plush residence he occupied in London that he came back, by which time his right-hand man, Abba Kari, had stamped his notoriety on the affairs of Nigeria. Another story for another day. General Buhari is never seen where he should be. He never participates in discussions because he cannot mentally. Have we forgotten the various video clips where he answers questions with totally unrelated matter? When there's a disaster, he never shows up. 
perhaps because he cannot. When boys are kidnapped from just outside his doorstep in Katsina, he did not show up. Instead, rather surprisingly, the boys were returned in record time. For an incompetent army and president, this episode rang alarm bells. A set up, probably? That's what I think. Now, a more transmittable strain of COVID-19 is about. Boris Johnson looks knackered from all the goings on, completely changing the nature of Christmas holidays in the UK. Now that's a leader. Our president, no word. Instead, his presidential task force on COVID, led by one boss, Mustafa, continue to ramble on. They neglect to admit that this virus has had little impact on Nigeria. And the reasons for this should make for scientific exploration. That new mutated virus is in Nigeria already. Has this been properly explained to us? The president has borrowed so much that he now has to borrow pension funds. And guess who supported him? The man he sort of fought for to enjoy further time at the AFDB, the African Development Bank. That's additional, a namesake of one of his blabber mouths. Even then, the president was still nowhere to be seen or heard, just press releases. Where was he when the youth were gunned down at the Lekki toll gates? Nowhere to be seen. For days, only to declare war on the youngsters via his police inspector general. The task to speak was left to the three wise men. That's Lai Mohammed, Garba Shehu, and Femi Adishino. The president is now a running joke, except to idiots. Glance at comments made by young Nigerians about him, and it is clear what they think about him, what they think of him. They laugh. They jeer, they poke fun. They have no respect for him. And I don't either. Who does? I think what we should do now is to start to seek a parliamentary system of government with less overheads and a weaker prime minister. The worst cases of presidents have been on show lately, here and in the United States. We don't need this crap and embarrassment. We need solid leadership, transparent, honest, and intelligent. If no one wants to address this very important matter, I do. Another year is upon us, and this joke must stop. Another <laughs> year is upon us, and this joke must stop. You know, what? one of the things I, I, I recall about this present government and where we started getting it, they started getting it wrong, is looking at Joe Biden, the president-elect in, in the U.S., and how he's meticulously been picking the men who will work with him. And I remember back then, we had to wait for six months. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, the, what, what did we get? The, what did we get, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, it's been, it's been that kind of pattern since then, you know, what, from one disappointment to the other, from one disappointment to the other. You never find our own president saying something that will give hope or cushion you know, it's always like, oh, again, nothing. Nothing. So I agree yeah, with yeah, you. But, but, but when we were voting, or when Nigerians, don't let me use we, when Nigerians were voting for, for the president, they knew he doesn't talk now, didn't they? They're not just discovering that. We um, believed it was an action, man. That it was going to change overnight. No, it, it, it wasn't going to change overnight. And, and, and contrary to... Um, uh, Chuka's position where he, he didn't want to put in the vice president in the mix. I want to put him in the mix as well. Um, his silence in recent times have been deafening. He doesn't do as he used to. He doesn't speak as he used to speak. He doesn't go to places as he used to go to. Apparently, he see that there is a contagion about uh, or a conspiracy of silence going on at that level or Maybe he has been put in a bucket or pocketed something somehow. I, I don't understand. Whatever the case is, the people are the ones suffering. When people look up to their leaders and they want some words, sometimes you may not even have the solution. Boris doesn't have solution to COVID. But you know, sometimes there are things you say, there are some steps you make, and it just provides certain comfort that somebody yeah. is watching or somebody is doing something. We don't get that. So I, I, I imagine the, the, the Kankara issue, for example, and I had expected. It, it doesn't mean that he's the one to go and rescue them. It doesn't mean, but just some words of comfort that goes to the people who are 
direct victim to say, oh, the president is doing something about this. Some what assurance. Absolute no. silence. Absolute silence. silence. When, when and then the three wise men are when, the ones to, shooting from all sides and they do, mouth. When Nigerians they were... They just make things worse. worse. When Nigerians were all over the place, in that, uh, you know, once uh, President Muhammadu Buhari is elected, the country will change. They cited 1984 and all that, all he did and all that. I was just laughing because I knew that this man just want to be a president. And you know, every other thing is an afterthought. Because if you look at um, the 80s, since he left office in the 80s, check through the internet, check through everywhere. This man have no article he has written on anything. Yeah, but he doesn't have to be a writer. He has no contribution on economic issues or social issues. Don't forget he, he led has not, PTF. So, so, so having, not, he having, PTF. Not, having not really made impact since mm. he left. He, he heard that officer, I know, but I don't see him as someone who was ready to rescue Nigeria from the quagmire it was that it is today mm. because the, his presence and his absence are just the same. There is no difference <laughs> why he was in office and now that why he's, he's why he was not in office and now that he's in office. So Nigeria is just on, on a auto cruise, cruise, on auto cruise. You understand? So we have not been able to practically get this country together for anything positive. It's the dimension of the, the silence, as Bilan said, the deafening silence of the vice president that makes it you know, look like we're all just abandoned and on our own and we're the just floating from looking. one point the to the other. The vice president cannot really function in the presence of the president, except such powers are delegated to him. Yeah. So you don't expect him to usurp the authority of the president. That we are man to prison. Correct. Undermining the you president. And, 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 and he yeah. will be punished. Chuka, I want to speak. Chuka. Yeah, yeah, Evans, you're right, exactly. The vice president can't really... Not, but I think that the vice president, anyway, is not really useful to us in reality. Um, there's nothing he can do. If he wants to talk, it, he, he can he, he can talk and nothing will happen. His importance is actually zero in this government. I sort of think that the death of Abakari um, led to the complete confusion going on. Mm. Because before, there was not this much confusion. There was this much wickedness. But it was not so confused. His, his, his absence means that there's nobody to gather what I would call the crooks together right, to, to plan gather the whatever crooks. they're planning. Right. You know, I mean, I mean, you can, you can tell. Yes, Chuka, you I, can tell with the NIN. It's obvious. The, the NIN policy. Yes. One thing you're saying is two weeks. And now, as I yesterday, you're saying, okay, we're extending it. To February. You it should was, have known it, 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 already. It wasn't a well thought through. It, it was wasn't. Not, uh, and decision. then if you look at the, the what Chuka also said again, the fact that COVID-19, the virus is mutating. And our borders are still open. As a, as, as, Do you as want them to close the borders again? Well, borders yeah, were just open. About 40 After nations have closed months. their I borders against they, they the UK. Uh, okay, you're talking about the, the UK. Yeah. The, yes, uh, our, yeah. our, our airports I, are still I open. I perfectly agree with that. And I, you know these people, just as Chuka said, that mutated variety is already here in Nigeria. Uh, you see, our reaction um, shows the fact that we're not prepared. For this, we are just doing a copy and paste situation. Not exactly it what has been mean. declared in Europe, therefore, let's declare. Yeah, we we'll probably just rev up a little, some. Uh, the second testing. wave is so. But artificial. think about it. Nobody till now told us why the first wave went as it went. Mm -hmm. How Nigeria. come there were no dead bodies on the street across Africa? Yes, some said, Oh, it was because we shut down. Uh, our borders early. No, they shut down in Europe. They shut down in America. They still had that same volume of death in all those places. So what did we do right? Maybe if we know what we did right, we can copy it and we can do more of it uh, today. And the but next question we should add to that one is that what exactly is COVID? Because Chuka alluded to it in his advocacy that this virus have not been explained to us. We actually don't know what it is. We are just, you know, scientifically, you can read about it. Yes, <laughs> but, but what I want to say really is that the issue of the vaccine also. Now the budget um, has been passed by the legislators. They've added some six billion or thereabout, or sixty billion. Is it five hundred billion to 
to the budget. Absolutely. What for? We don't know. Nobody's challenging them. Um, the vaccine, is Nigeria getting a vaccine? Again, it, we're, seeing, we're seeing restrictions billion. now. One day, I'm hoping they're not going to say, okay, second lockdown, please, where would the palliatives come from this time? Yeah, the, the, the portion you mentioned about um, insertion by the National Assembly, that is what they do every year. When the budget goes to them, they slot in all sort of things all in things. various sections. Some of them improperly costed, some of them probably no drawings, no engineering works, nothing. Mm. They just have an estimate and they throw it. And most of them are actually very, I, I, I don't know the right word. They just shouldn't so be sad. there. Shouldn't For most be there, of them, they yes. shouldn't be there at all. But nobody asks them. If and you challenge them, they will say they won't current, pass the budget. Your current expenditure it, is still rising. The thing is, and, uh, and we're being told that Nigeria is in a second recession, isn't it? So it is. but we keep adding to these budgets, and the rich keeps getting, keep getting richer, and the poor people keep you know, struggling for palliatives, and they're the ones <laughs> being restricted. Because, I mean, our elites can still fly around in private jets. Capital expenditure right. is you know? on, uh, almost uh, where it was at the, the last year. Nothing, nothing so, has changed. So, I mean, and this year, we've not seen any... Viable project. Lagos Ibadan Expressway is still oh, a debt trap. Some projects project. are coming up. Uh, the the president is commissioning something now. in Benin today. Okay. Uh, the largest LPG, uh, uh, I think, reservoir. Uh, it's, it's and then there's a train. Please, you need to you know, take, take the train from there. Lagos Ibadan. There are projects. So. Yeah, so the and people are already projects. taking the train. So where, some things where, are happening. Where there are there are projects. <laughs> there are projects. But the Lagos Ibadan Expressway that has been under construction since 1998. Is still under construction to date. I remember. Yeah, but they can argue that there's been the PDP government as well before the APC government, and they didn't. No, I, I, I'm <laughs> saying the Nigerian government. I'm not even talking I, about I, this I government. I wish there is a, a difference between these two guys. I, I don't see that. It's, exactly. It's a blur line where you can walk in and out. It's just a platform for contesting election. When one party doesn't give you that platform, you cross over to that other party and get the and, platform. And get so it. the parties are not really different. So the same we, people who were in fact, we had a former chairman of PDP become an APC member. We operate one party system. Thing. What we do is during the election, they divide into two. And then, and then after election, after <laughs> after <laughs> after after <laughs> and then after election, they close ranks. So that is it. <laughs> I am up next after the break. In this Christmas edition of The Advocate, I wish to pitch my gaze on rural dwellers and the myth built around their stead by the widespread spectrum of society. So I speak on village people. For two decades, I studied the psychology of power with great passion. I asked Rabbi endless questions on the bane of power as a wagon of social influence in corporate and informal settings. How manipulations, seduction, superstition, intimidation, hypnotism, and witchcraft are used and contrived by men at their varying levels of thought, education, environment, and understanding. Beliefs have it that village people use extraterrestrial powers to deploy forces against urban dwellers. That every action, inaction, and the reaction of the urban populace are remotely orchestrated by village people. Those who hold this belief rely solely on stories forced down on them from generation to generation. Is the villager guilty as charged? I leave that to your judgment. Power is a natural taste, and everyone wants a measure of it. With power, people control others, manipulate and induce them to a point of decision, covenant, pledge, influence, agreement, and trust. The implication of the aforementioned is that the interests so protected here extend beyond the common good of parties. The captor in this context masterminds the enslavement of the captive and watch him gradually slope into pain while he remains awake to watch 
this with unwavering pleasure. It is what it is. Kings lack the caution of common men. This is the physical dynamics of power. The perception that village people manipulate the life of their victims and cause them to die at the prime of their achievement is spiritual, sometimes relative and geography sensitive. This belief is very African, like a corollary to the same belief system. Highly religious people pray for others to die so they alone can inherit the earth. Are these religious people practicing the same occupation with village people? Who is who here? I implore you to be the judge here again. A spiritual assessment of fact reveals that the contextual perception that village people are executioner is probable, but same if sub subjected to deep critical assessment has consistently failed the test of empirical evidence for want of logical and clear court probabilities. Village people, for whatever they are known for, are humans and ought not to be judged by the proclivities of their geography. The very minute callous ones among them have earned for the whole the prognosis of eternal condemnation from all who have judged them guilty for being responsible for any young wealthy man that dies in his community. With this, it appears that natural cause of death no longer have a place in society. I would therefore advocate that we must deal with the margin of error and engage society with the common truth of providence that this age-long superstitious belief must make way for new conversation of civilization that will recast cultural psychology and purge society of contempt and renew her with the purity of the spirit of knowledge and the hope to free society from the clutches of redundancy and retrogression. I say, Merry Christmas to you. I shall go to Rabbi again. Interesting, interesting piece. Oh. Uh, you know, I, I, I saw this uh, uh, thing on, so the, on, the, on, the, no, on the social media <laughs> recently. Uh, it was trending. Someone was asking, how come when Nigerians go abroad, they suddenly get less religious. So uh, the number of fasting days, the number of vigils and all of that tend to reduce. Uh, and the natural responses I got from a lot of respondents was that, look, when they, see, when they see a system that works, some of the things that need binding and casting are no longer necessary. So when the roads are better, the accidents tend to reduce. When the healthcare system works, the avoidable deaths just tend to go down. And so a lot of things that take their time and you challenge village people how they send this, how they send that, just started leaving the table. So the, the prayer point that has to do with village people start to go down. Yes. You know. So th th these are the realities of our society. The village people themselves sometimes enjoy that power play because it <laughs> gives them some sort of control that look, that London where you go, if you know, remember me, I go shake something, you go pack your load overnight and you go begin coming. <laughs> so somebody will take cognizance of that and remember that I someone in the village. Chuka, do you agree? You're in the UK. A yep. village yes. people with you there. The, you see, the thing is, we are, we are of the belief that the village people, that their power does not cross the borders of Nigeria. <laughs> so they can't reach so, Chuka. That's, <laughs> yes, that they cannot reach here. So, for instance, as I'm here now, I'm not worried about anything from the village. Um, <laughs> it will have to wait for me to come back. And that, that's a very serious matter because it is honestly, I mean, Evans has said a lot of these things. There's no empirical evidence for them. So I don't know where the evidence is that it will not work in England if it is originated in Oguashuku in Delta State. So, and that I have to come back to Nigeria for it to work. Now, I ask the question, Nigeria 
as a place. It's not the same exact thing as Washington in Delta State, which is a particular place. Why does the power of the village people even leave the boundaries of the village? And, and, then, and then why is it constrained to just Nigeria? Perhaps if I go to Benin Republic, I'll be okay as well. So it's just a line, a geographical line is the end of their powers. Interesting. Well, you're thinking there are no uh, village people abroad, but we know of cases of people who've suddenly packed their things, <laughs> their belongings, and <laughs> appeared in Lagos or their village <laughs> because they had been summoned by the villagers. <laughs> village people. <laughs> there. <By> African insurance. <laughs> it's some kind of Bluetooth. <laughs> Although, to be honest, though, a lot of people, when they are relocating abroad, like with their families, it, 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 this is what used to happen. It's just, it's, I think it still does happen. They go and offer, they go and do their village things before they leave for protection abroad. Hmm. It's, so, it's a well-known well thing. Point, can I, can I, can I yeah. share a, a, a story real quick? I have a cousin um, who won this uh, American lottery. And shortly before... He left Nigeria. He just started falling ill. Serious ailments that at some point, even the teaching hospital said, look, I can't handle this. But somehow, uh, he got a bit well, and they just managed to get him on the aircraft, and he went to the U.S. So he went to a hospital in Houston, Ben Top, where he was diagnosed. And in a few days, he started to get much better. Within a couple of weeks, this young man, was great all over again. Now, if that man had died in Nigeria, they would have said he was killed. So was it, could it be that whatever they planted, the witches and wizards from, uh, uh, from the, the village, village, whatever they planted on his body dropped off when he got on the aircraft? Or what, what, what could have happened to that kind of person? Over to uh, you, it, village it falls, man. <laughs> it, 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 it falls within the confines <clears throat> of what, what I'm saying, because we have magnified these forces to the point that we are scared of their claws. Mm. Okay, um, I remember that while we were in the law school, there's this uh, friend of mine who, because while you're in the law school, you have to attend the three compulsory dinner, okay? On the second dinner, he was at a hostel. I think he dozed off. And by the time he woke up, dinner was the dinner was already ongoing and the door has been shut. Because once that happens, you cannot be caught to buy that year. Wow. wow. So he got to the, to the door, he was knocking, and the place is already shut. At the end of the day, when we now, you know, finished and came out, immediately we saw him. The first thing a friend said is that they are following you from, from the village. village. <laughs> that is why you have to doze <laughs> off, you know, a few minutes to the mm. dinner. And he wasn't called to buy that yet. Oh, my God. So I, 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 I do not think that... His village people did that remote that what do you, you think know, happened? That so cast happened? a spell on him and he fell asleep. I think that sleeping is a natural cause. That is what I think. But we, we also need keep... to probe what he did the night before. Yeah, those are issues. Mm. But what I want to see and I want to take away from here is that at this time of the year, Nigerians generally travel to their villages. Yes. It's as if Jesus was born in their villages. But, you know, <laughs> they just do all kinds of things. They make sure they move things, especially our brothers on the eastern part of yes. the country. They just move, like we move mm. to the village. And um, most times it costs money, it costs lives sometimes right. because True. they have accidents True. on the road and we never see them again. And sometimes they come back with wives. So village people can really be nice. Yeah, of course. So they come back with wives from the villagers, and then they start living nicely. <laughs> yes. If they come back with gari, plantain, yam, <laughs> that is why those who sell food stuff in Lagos, they say January is a bad month for them because people don't patronize them. That when they take stock of sales, they find out that they have a lot left you after, know? because people will not come to buy because they are... They are still, the they're still stuck up. So what's the well, point about, your, about villagers that you said today, that we should embrace going to the village, should not be afraid of villagers? We should not be should. afraid of them. That they, I've, I've, I've said it already that the, the imaginary forces we think that resides uh, within the, the village people and their confines is not as dangerous as we make it to look. In other words, it's a, you're telling us it's an illusion. It's, we shouldn't believe in yeah, it. It is an illusion. There, there is, I, I said something there that 
the few dangerous ones among them, okay, the few callous ones among them, have, you know, made it look like everybody in the village are against city dwellers. And that whatever you see that happen in the city is remote or is remoted from the village. And if if they are that bad, we will not gather our winnings for an entire year, put it in a vehicle, and go to them in the village to go yes. and show off how our, our conquest, if they are that bad. Yes. That's true. Well, keep broadening the conversation with your comments on our episode. Our advocacy will definitely be incomplete without your contribution. God's own king's man says on our last advocacy, nobody in Nigeria will want to take the COVID-19 vaccine. Hmm. Also, Ben Adams says, anyone who loses public funds should remain in prison and perfect the project in which the money he or she stole was meant for. Then when he has completed the project, then he can be free. No bail. <laughs> Thank you, God's own Kingsman and Ben Adams, for your comments. Do continue to participate with us on our social media platform on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, the Advocate NG. To catch up with our previous brokers, go to plustvafrica.com, The Advocates. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Bola will preach on the act of giving this season of Christmas. Merry Christmas. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, it, it does. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Christmas can truly be Christmas when we celebrate it by giving to those who need it the most. And this brings me to my advocacy today, the act of giving. A story was told of a young homeless boy loitering around a donut shop in one of those European cities in those years after World War II. Just as European nations were beginning to pick up the pieces of their lives, he was desperately hungry. But he had no money. And the smell of hot donut, irresistible. He buried his face in the curve of his joint palms and said a little prayer. A soldier walked in to get himself some donuts without even paying the slightest attention to the hungry boy. He got two packs anyway, and as he walked out of the shop, he handed one of the boxes to the young boy and turned to walk away. The boy grabbed him by the wrist and asked intently, Are you Jesus? The soldier shook his head, smiled and said, I guess you pray to Jesus. I am not Jesus, but there's a little Jesus in all of us, if we allow him to manifest. The summary of all faith is in the passage in Matthew 25, 34 to 46. Referring to the people who inherit eternal life, Jesus said, Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Truly, I tell you, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. 
We can stretch this further into the Jewish belief about giving, in which the highest form of giving is that which you give someone so that he does not need to depend on you for handouts forthwith. Put in another way, a gift that makes them start to fish on their own, as opposed to eating the fish you give them and looking up to you for the next. Have you given at that level before? Therefore, in this season, let us all give out of love and not as a show off. Lift others up and resist the desire to be the only rich man in your circles. Remember, a community of one rich man and six poor people is a community of the poor. In a society like ours, where the rich give more to the rich, can you dare to be different? And give your more to those who have nothing to give you back beyond their prayers and goodwill. If you survive 2020, that in itself is a gift. Many were not so lucky. So desire in your heart that in this season, you will give someone something, be it money, food, clothing, or even your time, your call, your smile and warmth, or your attention. Forgiving makes the world a better place to live. This money you stash away in foreign land where it is helping Oyibo, while your people suffer. Bring some home. Fix one or two schools. Refurbish and equip some primary health care centers in your local government. Or endow a scholarship for the best student in a subject you love. Those empty properties scattered around Nigeria and abroad where nobody lives in them. Sell one or two and put in a foundation to fund some research in, in science and technology. To whom much is given, much is expected. Make impactful giving your new habit. You can start small. You can start this season. In fact, you can start today. Mm. Mm. Two things jump at me from this advocacy. One is that if you survived 2020, mm. uh, that itself, in itself, is a gift. So very true. It's been a, it's been a, a really a challenging, challenging year. year. Yeah. Right. It's, it's been an unusual year, and we have reacted and responded in unusual ways as well. Yeah, right. uh, at some point during the year, we didn't know who was next to die. I mean, just this morning, I remembered one of the broadcasters on one of the stations in Lagos, Dan Foster, and I just said to myself, my God, he's gone. Mm. You know, so a, a lot of us can just begin to recount the many people who've gone away with 2020. So at this mm. point, it, whether it's restricted uh, Christmas celebration or a lockdown Christmas, we should just be happy. Then again, you said, there's a little Jesus in all of us. Correct. If we allow him to manifest. Little Jesus. It was a very beautiful story. I remember reading it and saying, hmm, you set a prayer, nobody hears your prayers, but you see a manifestation of your prayer. So the first right. manifestation for me yeah. is that I'm alive at the end of 2020. And so when I'm eating my chicken and my, and my <laughs> rice, sure not palisi rice, so I'm going to be sharing, <laughs> I'm going to be sharing with someone and I'm going to have a huge big smile on my face that I survived it. Correct. Yes, right. and uh, I want to say that um, looking at the scripture you quoted, that scripture was actually quoted twice in, 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 in the, the Bible. Bible. Yeah. Uh, there was a part where Jesus used it to set the standard for the last day where he said, I was hungry, you did not feed me. Yes. Because this part you quoted was where he said, I was hungry, you fed me. I was tasty, you gave me water. Correct. There's but, the other side. Yeah, the first time it was raised, because it's in, in theology there's what you call the law of first mention. So when you are interpreting the law of first, first mention, first mention yeah. when you are interpreting scripture, you need to find the place where that particular issue was first mentioned, and then see what how that links to the, the other part. Mention, yeah. So while you have stated one part of it, I want to talk about the second part, yeah. and that is where Jesus laid the standard for judgment day. That on the day of judgment, it's not, it's not going to be about righteousness. It's not going to be about uh, how intelligent you were or how much you preached or how how you raise the dead how or, you raise the dead or how you do how you went to church every day <laughs> chica yeah. you want to yeah, wait well, on this well don't forget that before the ten commandments were given um the the most important thing was love your neighbor as yourself yes right. and 
all others, all other things will follow. It is yes. the greatest commandment. And yeah, and the funny thing is, you read the commandment, and it's nothing. There's nothing more to say, depending on your level of intelligence. If God had stopped at love your neighbor as yourself, we should actually be able to make out the commandments <laughs> by ourselves. I mean, mm. why would you steal if you love your neighbor as yourself, or kill, or covet your neighbor's wife, you know, and so on, and husband. Um, and so I, I, I quite like this whole thing of, you know, it's just about love and, you know, the giving, the looking after others, um, look after yourself as well, looking after others, kindness. You know, those are the things that actually touch me more than, you know, than most of that is those simple acts that deal with the major issue. That's the way we should, you know, approach this thing. We shouldn't make it very complicated. You know, we talk about the constitution, we talk about the laws of the land, it starts getting very complicated. <laughs> if we just teach the average man to love his neighbor as himself, uh, quite honestly, even lawyers will find their work easier. We'll get to a point where we love, love ourselves. ourselves. Finally, it is time to draw the curtains on this week's episode of The Advocate. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Merry Christmas, Chuka. <laughs> to you all. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.